dreadnoughts, the huge battleships, would determine the outcome of any battle or even possibly determine the outcome of a war. For that reason, they continued building battleships. Uh, the United States did particularly. Uh, the British couldn't afford to do so after the end of World War I because the British were, were broke, were bankrupt. Not just the British. The Great War had been a costly affair for all sides. And now the United States and Japan led a new arms race. The peace was proving expensive and a line had to be drawn. On November 12th, 1921, Washington opened the world's first arms limitation talks. The United States, Great Britain, Japan, France, and Italy all attended. This massive 16-inch rifled naval gun was being built here in the Washington Navy Yard even as leaders from the naval powers of the world were meeting in 1922 for the Washington Naval Arms Conference to reconsider what should be the limits that might be placed on naval power you know, all over the world. How might there be a, a rational limit to all of the spending? Out of it came, of course, a disarmament plan. Various ships would be destroyed, no new ones would be built not only battleships, but others, and a kind of a ratio as far as various nations were concerned. The Washington Treaty dealt a body blow to the big gun battleships. Many were abandoned, many more scrapped. At the stroke of a pen, the United States achieved parity with Great Britain, and having generally newer ships, stood poised to become the world's most powerful navy. But even as the treaty was being signed, the battleship was being dealt another, ultimately more lethal blow. By way of experiment off the coast of the United States, an old battleship was subjected to air bombardment. After only four minutes of hits and near hits, she sank. The great armored ship had been shown to be more vulnerable than even experts believed. A concerted campaign of public demonstrations staged to prove the assault power of the airplane served also to expose the battleship's vulnerability, even though it was unmanned, unarmed, and at anchor. That year, politics sank a lot of ships. A succession of agreements held for just over 10 years. But then the Japanese, followed by the Italians, began to build bigger warships. Germany then renounced the restrictions of the Versailles Treaty and laid the keels of the Neisenau and the Scharnhorst. The dictator nations were off and running, and the democratic nations took note. The race was on again. The reason would soon be all too obvious. In 1939, war raged through Europe. America could only watch and wait as once again navies were mobilized against each other. The battleship, still widely considered to be the most potent and flexible weapon of modern warfare, was at the heart of the European fleets. The heart of the U.S. Navy's Pacific Fleet was thousands of miles away. On the morning of Sunday, December 7, 1941, all but one of the U.S. Pacific Fleet dreadnoughts were lying at anchor in their home base of Pearl Harbor. I came on watch uh, at uh, 4 o'clock that morning. I was came back from Liberty and went on watch. So at 5.30, I sounded Reveille to get everybody up. Two hundred miles to the north, six Japanese aircraft carriers were turning their bows into the prevailing wind. And then at uh, 
Around six, I sounded chow calls so that they could get up there and eat. At six o'clock, the Japanese launched their first wave of attack. Torpedo bombers, high-level bombers, and fighters all headed south. And then I had breakfast, and I went back on the quarter deck. And then about uh, five minutes to eight, I sounded first call for colors. And about that time, that's when we saw the bunch of airplanes coming in. When airplanes were heard, a little before eight o'clock that Sunday morning, no one was alarmed. There was no reason to think they might be hostile. From a distance, you can't tell whether they're yours or who they were. And at this time, we weren't at war with anybody that I knew of. And so we said, well, it's gonna be a drill. But it was not a drill. General Quarter sounded and I went topside to my battle station. There was uh, no need for radio communication. It was obvious we were under attack. Planes were all over the place. The first attack launched a torpedo against the battleship California. It was a direct hit. Our first sergeant came up because it blew him out of his office and says, get your butts to your battle stations, we're under attack. And I said, who? He said, the Japanese. Get your head up there. After the torpedoes, the bombers took their turn. I had my, my right ankle shot open. I had a chip of bone out of my right shin. I had my right hand shot open. I had five pieces of shrapnel in the left leg. Oh, I had something go through the right thigh and out my rear. I had a six by eight inch piece knocked out of my left thigh. I lost part of my left elbow, part of the left bicep. I lost all the skin from my face, arms, legs. Arizona took a direct hit. I have never in my life known fear like that moment. The explosion was, was just tremendous. The, the bow just seemed to come up and settle, and then this hellacious ball of fire and it was over, and that, that's all it was. We fought fires up until about 8.45, and then someone said abandon ship, and I didn't argue. No, I went up forward, dove over the side, and swam to Fort Island. This is CBS in America calling Honolulu. Go ahead, Honolulu. This is CBS in America calling Honolulu. Go ahead, Honolulu. In less than two hours, 18 ships of the Pacific Fleet had been crippled or sunk, including the eight battleships. The Arizona and the Utah remain where they fell. Poignant reminders of that day of infamy. Go ahead, Honolulu. What it demonstrated was simply that the aircraft carrier had come of age as a weapon. Pearl Harbor showed that there were some very high performance carrier airplanes around that could uh, really pack a very serious punch. The battleships had been sitting ducks. This had not been a battle fought on their terms. But nonetheless, their power had been eclipsed by a superior force. 